guys, it's Melanie. Happy Saturday and welcome to a requested video. <laughs> Today, instead of what I burned slash melted this week, I am doing a video that I'm going to call Candle Burning 101. This is a requested video and I have actually had multiple requests to do something like this. Um, I realize that most of you who watch my weekend videos for the candle reviews and candle hauls and things like that already kind of know what you're doing when it comes to burning a candle. And yes, I will also do a Wax Melt 101 video that will come at a later date, but um, I figured this would be good for those of you that are kind of just getting into home fragrance or those of you that have been doing this for a really long time might be interested in how I do things differently from you. And I would love feedback down below if, you know, if there's something that I talk about, if you have... Um, you know, a good amount of experience burning candles, if you have a different way of doing things or a suggestion for me to help me get a better performance out of my candles, um, definitely leave that down below in the comments section. So I'm going to try to be as comprehensive as possible. As a result, this video will probably be a little bit longer. Okay, first, when you are buying candles, I would always suggest waiting for a sale if there are sales on the particular candles that you are interested in purchasing. Most of us tend to go to places like Bath & Body Works and Yankee Candle, and honestly, most companies have sales pretty much every weekend, if not every other weekend. So don't ever walk into a Bath & Body Works and, for example, buy this candle for $26.50. Um, this candle is no longer available. It is the Berry Waffle Cone. Um, never pay full price <laughs> for any of the candles that you're buying at a lot of these like regular mall retail stores. There are coupons, so sign up for the website. Wait to get a coupon because you can get the candles a lot cheaper. There are some candle companies that I love that don't have sales at all, really, necessarily. I mean, Homeworks comes to mind. They do have today's special values on QVCs, on QVC, so, um, but it doesn't necessarily apply, like, to the entire lineup of Homeworks candles. So, some you're just going to have to pay full price for, um, but, you know, you kind of pick what is worth it to you. To me right now, um, even with saving money on Bath & Body Works candles and them being technically cheaper than the Homeworks, I still prefer these over these because the burn's much better. <laughs> and these are soot producers, and I'll kind of tell you how to cut down on soot, um, but some candles just are a little bit more sooty. So first off, always buy your candles on sale if you can get them on sale, and sign up for the store coupons because, you know, 20% off at when there's a two for 24 sale or a 10 off of 30, especially at Bath & Body Works, brings the candles down a lot and um, you shouldn't be paying full price if you don't have to. Second, when you get a candle home, you wanna make sure that you're storing them properly. Really the most ideal place is a dark, cool closet. So make sure that you're not storing them in a place where they are going to be exposed to an excessive amount of light or an excessive amount of heat. Um, so the attic, probably not the best place. You also don't want your candles freezing. So if you have um, a basement, <laughs> um, I don't know that I would necessarily put them in a base. And I'm talking like a traditional, like cold, dark, underground basement, not a finished basement, if that makes sense. Um, you just don't want to put your candles in either extremes, like too cold or too hot. Um, you want kind of just a nice, even temperature, dark situation for your candles. So whether that is in a cabinet or in a closet or underneath your bed, in, you know, those Sterilite drawers that you can get for underneath your bed or wherever you have in your house, feel free to store them there. <laughs> you just want, like I said, a nice, even temperature. Um, most candles... Um, will last for years. Candles that don't last as long are typically soy candles, I've found. They do tend to lose their fragrance over time. So if you're purchasing a lot of soy candles from either Light My Soy or Milk House Creamery, 
I would suggest burning those within a year or two of getting them, so maybe don't buy in bulk. Um, candles from Bath & Body Works I've had for years. Candles from Yankee I've had for years, and they've been fine. So typically, soy wax tends to lose fragrance a little bit more quickly in my experience. Um, I'm not as 100% sure about uh, beeswax. Um, I do believe this is a beeswax blend, so I think there's some other things in here. Um, but, you know, I typically don't tend to buy root candles in bulk. I do have some that I purchased last summer with an amazing coupon code they had sent out. But I do intend on using those up this year and probably next year. It'll take me a little while because they are longer burning. But just make sure that no matter you know, how many candles you're buying that you're actually intending on using them because eventually they can, you know, start to lose their fragrance and you might as well enjoy them while you have them. So, um, in terms of lighting a candle for the first time. So most candles do come with a wick that is the appropriate size for lighting. And I just pulled out this new Bath and Body Works candle to give you guys an example of a wick length that is perfect for lighting so if it was any longer than this I would probably trim it down to this size right here so I don't know maybe that's like maybe half an inch maybe a slightly less um, so if you have anything longer than this probably trim it down slightly do not trim your wicks too low to the wax because your your candle won't um, it'll have trouble pulling out. It may eventually, but, um, you know, it could have trouble pulling out. So just make sure that the wick is the right length. If it's too tall, sometimes you can get like really like high flames, which not safe. Um, so make sure the wick is the right length. Also on your very first burn, this is something that's really important for, I have found all candles, whether they're soy, beeswax, paraffin, like a soy vegetable paraffin blend make sure that you're letting the candle pool out to the side so make sure that there is a complete wax pool across the top if you don't do that you will get a candle that will tunnel and that's why you sometimes see candles that have wax along the outside and no matter how many times you light it it never pulls out completely again because the wax almost has like a wax memory so it will only pull out to that you know certain spot where you you know let it go to the very first time so it's much easier to burn a candle evenly when you let it pull out completely all the way across and if you do that on each burn um, that's ideal each type of wax pools out at a different time frame Bath and Body Works candle I can usually get a full pool in like 20 minutes root candles it can sometimes literally take me i mean four hours <laughs> some of the homeworks candles can take a couple of hours it just kind of depends so make sure that if you are coming home after a long day of work and you intend on going to bed maybe within an hour after getting home i would probably pick a bath and body works candle over a root candle to light up so that way you're not having to deal with the tunneling issue Sometimes you can correct tunneling by taking a piece of tin foil and wrapping it all the way around. What that does is it helps to hold the heat in and sometimes you can get the wax to melt all the way to the edge again, but that's not necessarily the case. So um, another thing that I wanted to point out really quickly in terms of talking about wax, um, some of these candles you see that there is very little residue on the side. Some um, have no residue on the side and some have a lot of residue on the side. This residue is okay. Um, you know, you just don't want to leave like a giant chunk of wax along the outside. So that's kind of what I'm talking about. Um, root candles are, like I said, a beeswax blend. They tend to leave residue on the side. Um, that's that's okay you just don't want like a solid chunk of wax around the outside because that's where you're going to get that tunneling issue um these particular candles are a little bit more messy they do clean up just fine once i am finished with them and i wipe them out um i will do a separate video on how i clean out my candle jars 
at a later date. Um, that's a whole nother video right there. But yeah, so let your candles pool out completely. When you blow them out, um, I don't like using the lid and here's why. This is just an example here. My husband used this lid to put this candle out right after I lit it. You can see that there's like a little indent there. Normally I would not allow this, but we were leaving the house just after I lit this up and he was like, I'm gonna, you know, snuff that. And so what he did is he put the lid on. So a lot of people do do this and that's fine. Some people actually dip their wicks. So there are these things called wick dippers. <laughs> find them on Amazon and they take the wick and they basically like plunge it into the wax pool you can do that um, I tend to just blow mine out um, that's my preferred method I just find that when I do this it traps the smoke inside and a lot of times most candles will absorb that smoky smell um, and you can smell it again the next time that you burn your candle and I just don't like that so I just prefer to blow it out and let that you know just a little bit of a puff of smoke come up and then it doesn't settle into the wax formula so that's a personal preference thing I know a lot of people like the wick dippers I if I had one I would probably use the wick dipper um, I've just never purchased one so if you like using those let me know down below maybe I'll grab one but um, anyway in terms of lighting candles, these are my favorite lighters. They're the Bic multi-purpose. I buy these at Target. I mean, you can buy these. Sorry, I just had to take that off apparently. You can buy these at the dollar store if you want. Um, they used to sell really nice lighters in the dollar section at Target, but they haven't had those recently. So I've just been buying these and they're really nice. So, and we use these for our outdoor fireplace anyway. So that's what I prefer. Um, when you are done burning your candle, um, I'm going to show you guys what I call the mushroom tops on the top of this candle and I'll show you how to trim those. So for example, this I would need to trim before lighting it again. So I just have these little cuticle scissors. You can actually buy special candle wick trimming scissors. They sell them at Yankee and you can get those there. But basically what I like to do is just nip the very top off so just this part right here and then I'm just gonna put this in my little garbage can here you do not want to let those wick trimmings stay in the wax because they're just gonna muck up the wax once it melts out, um, completely out I've never found that it like discolors the wax dramatically or makes it smell smoky by any stretch of the imagination. I just don't like the look of it. So it's usually very easy to, you know, pick them out and just, if you do happen to, for example, one of the little mushroom tops there is kind of floating out, if you can see that. I just put this over the garbage can and I just pour it out and then this candle is completely ready to go. So. That is wick trimming, it's very important. Some candles you don't need to, for example, this one I would not trim. Um, I would just let that one go because the there's no mushroom tops and um, it's fine, it's the proper length. So you're basically looking to get to roughly the same length as when the candles were brand new. Don't cut them too short because once again, your candle will not pull out and then you'll be stuck with this like tunneling mess of a candle. Um, some of my girlfriends are, they're not as into home fragrance as I am and when I go over to their house and I see their candles, I'm like, oh, what did you do? Uh, they just, they don't trim the wicks, they just light them over and over again and blow them out within five minutes and I'm always like, ah, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, and we have to have the talk of how to properly burn a candle, but I am that annoying friend, by the way. So anyway, this is, this is what I like to do. Um, in terms of how long to leave a candle burning, there are usually recommendations on the bottom. Um, for example, this one will tell you uh, no more than three to four hours at a time. I try to follow these guidelines just because I feel like you get the best burn out of most candles that way. With the root, let's see here. It doesn't actually say how long to leave it burning. Um, it just says you must trim the wick to a quarter of an inch each time, avoid drafty areas. Um, 
yeah, this one doesn't say, but because they do take so much longer to pull out, typically root candles, I will leave lit for a minimum of five hours. Uh, Bath and Body Works, I can leave these lit for half hour, 45 minutes. They'll be completely pulled out and I can blow them out if I want to or need to. It just kind of depends. I would say with Bath and Body Works, I would not keep them lit for more than three to four hours at a time because they do tend to get a little bit smoky after that, I found. Um, and that brings me to another point, soot. There are candles that are soot producers, and you can actually kind of tell with this one that there is some soot on the white wax there, if you can hopefully see that. I'm not sure what the lighting is like in here today, but um, there's no soot on here at all, so there's no like black marks. You can tell that your candle is a soot producer because you will either see black puffs of smoke coming off of it, in which case once I start seeing a candle doing that, I, j I just, I'm done with it and I will tell you guys what I do with those candles next. Um, but, you know, one thing you can do is if you want to continue to burn the candle, just blow it out, let the wax harden, trim the wicks, and then light it again. If it continues to soot, it's just a sooty candle. Uh, that can certainly settle on your ceilings. It can settle in your carpet. Um, it can settle in your walls. I mean, just, you know, if you are a frequent candle burner, if you just wipe down a one of the surfaces in your house and you see a lot of black or gray, it's probably soot. So one of the reasons that I rely so heavily on a candle crock, which is what this is. I actually have a whole separate video about candle crocks. I'll link it down below, but I decided to bring it in here for this video. Um, I will take troublesome candles like this and I will just plop it in here. And um, once you turn this on, this particular candle crock heats from the bottom and then the ceramic and this like insert in here basically makes the entire candle melt. Um, this candle right here was a soot producer the first time that I burned it, Honey and Tangerine. So you can see this one is brand new, and I'm actually just going to be putting this entire candle in here, and it will live its entire life in here. I will melt it, and um, usually I will get a full week of 24-hour fragrance out of a candle that is completely full. Usually if a candle is about at this point right here, I can get four or five days out of it, um, sometimes more depending on the fragrance. And um, yeah, once I'm done, I turn the uh, warmer off and then I let the wax harden and then I'm left with this. <laughs> so this candle lived its entire life in the warmer. You can see that the wicks drifted quite a bit. Um, there's also kind of like an indent in the wax here. You do not want to relight a candle like this because one, the wicks are completely off center. And if you do have a wick that travels to the outside of your candle while you're burning it, blow that out because you cannot have a flame this close to the outside of the glass. They can shatter and it will make a mess and it could potentially burn down your house, which it goes without saying. When you leave your house, blow out your candles. Do not ever take the chance, especially if you have pets at home. Always blow your candles out. If you are halfway down the street and you remember, turn around and go back. I've done it frequently, but I always come back home and I always blow them out because it's just not worth the safety risk, you guys. Um, but anyway, so this is what a candle looks like when it's done. So this has no fragrance left in it. And I'm basically just going to clean out this jar again. That'll be another video. And then um, I'll reuse this for something else. So um, another thing that you might want to invest in if you have a candle besides a really nice lighter and you want the candle to perform really well is to invest in a hurricane of some kind. This is just an example of one from Bath and Body Works. You can find hurricanes like this at TJ Maxx, Home Goods. Ikea even. So um, this one is from a few years ago. Basically what this does is once you put your candle in here, it helps to retain the heat. It helps the candle pull out a lot faster. It helps the candle to burn a little bit hotter so that there is a little bit more fragrance release I found. Um, you can also, like I said, with the root candles, you can wrap them in tin foil and do that. That doesn't look as pretty. 
Um, so I would just suggest investing in a nice hurricane. Those can be really nice decorative pieces in your house anyway. And they do help to hold the heat in, especially with troublesome candles that sometimes have trouble pulling out. Um, root candles usually for me always go into a hurricane of some kind when I'm burning them. Um, I don't have to do that with Bath & Body Works candles. I don't necessarily have to do that with Homeworks. Um, but uh, with soy candles, I typically will have to do that. Um, they just burn better that way and I can smell them a little bit better. So yeah, um, when I'm all done with my candles, I do like to reuse the glass, like I said, and I will do a video of how I clean these out. It's kind of different for each brand. Um, well, not really. We'll talk about it, but I do like to clean these out and repurpose them at the very least. If I'm not going to repurpose them, I do clean the glass out and then I will recycle them because glass is always recyclable. So there's that. Um, did I forget anything? Probably. <laughs> Let me know if you have questions down below. This is just kind of how I've always done things and how, how I have gotten the most out of my candles. Um, really the most important part is obviously the storage if you want to keep them long term make sure you're ha you have an appropriate area to store them make sure you're always trimming your wicks make sure you're letting them pull out make sure you're blowing them out before you leave the house um, and the rest is just kind of personal preference type stuff so let me know your tips and tricks down below Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. I know it was a little bit longer, but I do hope that it was helpful. And yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care. Bye.